Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we're gonna learn how to solve equations by factoring. Once you're comfortable factoring, solving an equation by factoring is pretty straightforward. You just need to remember the zero product property. That just tells you if you have two factors, a times b, that multiply and equal zero, that either a has to be zero, b has to be zero, or they both have to be zero. Kind of confusing, but let's look at an example. Example one has three factors, x, the binomial x minus five, and the binomial x minus eight. Those three factors are multiplied together and they equal zero. For that to be true, either the first factor, x, has to equal zero, or the second factor, x minus five has to equal zero, or that third factor, x minus eight, has to equal zero. The first factor is already solved, x equals zero. The second factor, if we add five to both sides, we see that that binomial, x minus five, becomes zero whenever x equals five. And the third factor, if we add eight to both sides, then the binomial x minus eight would be zero whenever x equals eight. That tells us our possible answers for x are zero, five, or eight. Let's look at example two. Again, we have three factors, x, the binomial x plus one, and the binomial x minus six, and they equal zero. So the first factor could be zero, x equals zero. The second factor, x plus one, could equal zero. Or the third factor, x minus six, could equal zero. Again, our first factor is already solved, x equals zero. Our second factor, if we subtract one from both sides, we get x equals negative one. And look, if you plug in negative one, that second factor becomes zero. The third factor, if we add six to both sides, we get x equals a positive six. That would make that third factor zero. So our possible answers for example two are that x could be zero, negative one, or six. Let's look at some quadratic equations or polynomials that we need to factor and solve. So we have four steps when we're solving a quadratic equation. And remember a quadratic is just a type of polynomial. It's in the format ax squared plus bx plus c. And we need this equal to zero in order to be able to factor and use our zero product property to solve. So step one is to make sure your equation is in that standard form. Step two, factor. Step three, you apply the zero product property that we just covered. And then step four, the best part of math, Solve and check. Always check your answer. So let's look at example one. Here we have 3m squared equals negative 9m. Well, this isn't in standard form. So what do we have to do to get it in standard form? Right, we need to add 9m to both sides. That moves the 9m from the right-hand side of the equation to the left-hand side, and it turns that right-hand side into equals zero. So the left is 3m squared plus 9m. And now that it equals zero, it's in standard form. We can factor the left-hand side, step two. Remember, when we're factoring, we look for a GCF. What's our GCF? 3m. We factor out the 3m and we're left with the binomial m plus 3 and this equals 0. Since we have a monomial times a binomial we can't factor this anymore 
So now we use the zero product property, which is step three. So we know that our first factor, 3m, would have to equal zero, or our second factor, m plus three, would have to equal zero. When we've solved the first, we divide by three, and we see the m becomes zero. The second factor, subtract three from both sides, and we see the m could be negative three. Remember what step four says? Solve and check. So now we need to check these answers. So to check, we plug in the answer, m minus zero, back in to that original equation. So we have three m, which is zero, squared equals negative nine times zero. Well, three times zero squared is three times zero, and negative nine times zero is zero. So we get zero equals zero. This checks, so we know that m equals zero is a possible answer. Now let's check m equals negative three. Take our original equation and plug in negative three for m. So we get three times negative three squared equals negative nine times negative three. Negative three squared is nine. So we have three times nine on the left equals negative nine times negative three, which is a positive 27. And three times nine is 27. So we get 27 equals 27. So that answer checks. So our solution then is that m equals zero or negative three. Let's look at example two. This isn't in standard form either. So we're going to distribute the t into the binomial. So t times t gives us t squared. t times one gives us plus t equals two. We're still not in standard form. We need to subtract that two from the right hand side. And we'll subtract it from the left, which gives us t squared plus t minus two equals zero. Now we need to factor. So we need two numbers, m and n, that multiply to negative two, and m plus n add to a positive one. Well, that would be the factors two and negative one. So this trinomial factors to t plus two times t minus one, and it equals zero. So now we go on to step three, which is the zero product property. So we know that each factor, t plus two, has to equal zero, and the factor t minus one equals zero. And we solve. So this first one, we get t equals negative two. And for the second, t equals a positive one. Now we need to plug those values back in to the original equation and check. So is negative two times negative two plus one equal to two? Well, negative two plus one in the parentheses becomes negative one. And then we have negative two times the negative one, which is a positive two. So two equals two. So yes, that one checks. So t equals negative two is a possible answer. Now let's check t equals one. 
we have one times one plus one equals two. Well, one plus one is two, and then one times two, is that equal to two? It is, so two equals two. So we know that t equals one is also an answer. So our solution here is gonna be that t equals negative two or one. Let's go to the next page and look at a couple more examples. Here, we're asked to use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to find the value of x in the figure. Remember that the hypotenuse, the angled line for your triangle, is always your c. And then a and b are either of the other two sides. So, we're going to use x minus 1 squared plus x squared equals x plus 1 squared. If you remember from when we factored, x minus 1 squared is a perfect square trinomial. So this expands to be x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then we have our plus x squared. And then the right hand side, the x plus 1 binomial squared, that's also a perfect squared trinomial. And this one expands to x squared plus 2x plus 1. If you don't remember that, you can always use FOIL and multiply x minus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, now we need to combine our like terms. So on the left hand side, we have 2x squared, which added together is 2x squared. Minus 2x plus 1 equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now remember to solve this, we need it to be in standard form. Everything on the left hand side and the right side is equal to zero. So everything that's on our right hand side, we're gonna subtract and bring over to the left hand side. So we're gonna subtract an x squared from the right and from the left. And at the same time, we're gonna subtract a two x from the right and subtract a two x on the left. And then our last term, we'll subtract one on the right and also subtract it on the left. So this cancels out everything on the right hand side and leaves us with an equal zero. And then we can go term by term. Two x squared minus an x squared is just one x squared. Negative two x minus two more x is minus 4x. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So it disappears. We just have x squared minus 4x equals 0. Our next step is to factor. Do we have a GCF? We have the GCF of x. So if we factor out an x, we're left with the binomial x minus 4. And that equals 0. Now you use your zero product property and you see that either the factor x equals zero or the factor x minus four equals zero. Solving that second one, we add four to both sides and we see that x equals four. So our possible answers are gonna be x equals zero or four. But we need to check this. And here, it's really easy to check because we're just gonna look at the sides of our triangle. If we plug in zero down here where we have the side B, it would say that this side of the triangle has a length or a measurement of zero. That doesn't make sense. 
And then if we look at the other side, x minus 1, if we plugged in the 0, it would say that this side of the triangle measures negative 1. Since that doesn't make sense, we throw this value of x equals 0 out. It works mathematically, it just doesn't work with this type of application. So the only answer here is x equals 4. Now let's look at everybody's favorite, a word problem, or an application. So here we're told the height h in feet of a golf ball after t seconds is given by h equals 96t minus 16t squared. And we're asked, how long does it take for the golf ball to hit the ground? Well, picture that. A golf ball starts on the ground, and when you hit it, it should leave the ground, go into the air, and then come back down to the ground. So there should be two points of when that golf ball is on the ground. So what does it mean to be on the ground? What height is this? Well, a ball on the ground is at a height of zero. So we need to solve the equation h is zero equals 96t minus 16t squared. Or we can rewrite this as 16t squared minus 96t equals zero. First, we always factor out our GCF, which here is 16t. Factor out 16t, and we're left with the binomial t minus six, and that equals zero. Notice that we have two factors. We have the factor 16t, which could equal zero, and the factor t minus 6 equals 0. Solving the first factor, divide by 16, and you see t equals 0. The second one, we add 6 to both sides, and we get t equals a positive 6. So let's think about that. Our possible answers for t, time, are 0, and six. Well, zero would be when the ball is first on the ground, before we even hit it. And then six would be six seconds later when the ball hits the ground again. So look at that question again carefully. It says, how long does it take for the golf ball to hit the ground? So the answer here is six. Six seconds. So it takes six seconds from the time that we hit the ball for that golf ball to come back and hit the ground. Have a question or a factoring problem you want help with? Leave it in the comments and I'll include it in one of my next videos. If this video was helpful, subscribe to my channel for more math tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you next time.